the Thai meridian represents a belt with small beads suspended from it. It can be translated as belt, band, strap, to encircle, to surround, to contour, to contain, to enclose, to link, to connect, to imply, to guide and to carry. Daimai is the only transverse meridian. It encircles the waist. This situation, embracing the rest of the meridians, suggests the relationship to the environment to us. If we relate it to numerology, Dumai would be related to number one, Renmai to two, Chungmai with three, this is man between heaven and earth, and four would be the Daimai. The four corresponds to the square, a figure symbolizing the earth as it draws the boundaries of a territory. Four also expresses the fundamental elements that make up life, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, as well as the orientations, north, south, east, west, where we are located. All this seems to suggest that on this transverse meridian resonate the influences of the cosmos, which means universe in order, on the individual, and therefore their relationship with the environment. Daimai brings us into harmony with the order governing the whole universe. We will see in what forms this takes shape. I like to relate the EVs to the practice of Tai Chi, which favors the permeability of all of them. With Daimai, the waste is liberated. There are authors who relate Daimai not only to Hui Yin, Ren Mai Wan in the trunk, but also to the kidney one point, which is situated between the front third and the back two thirds of the sole of the foot, which is precisely the area where Tai Chi Chuan practitioners discharge their chi on the ground, and from where they absorb it also. As the Tai Mai resonates with both the individual's vital orientation of the laws that govern the macrocosm in which they live, Early affection of this meridian may provoke the feeling that life has no meaning. The subject may feel isolated or unable to find their place in the world. Such a feeling of disconnection from the environment shall often be projected into the social sphere, so these people might not fit in their environment or may appear awkward because they tend to misinterpret social situations. They may also have not the needed flexibility to cope with social situations. And there's a Spanish expression that describes it very graphically. It's something as having the waste to get around the situations, which is something that an altered Dai Mai might not allow. On the other hand, the cohesive strength of Dai Mai to unit Chi and direct it can affect, on a psychic level, both the mental clarity and determination the person needs to be able to focus on a goal. Thus, a person whose daimai is fragile shall often be scattered, starting lots of things but finishing none of them. However, the pathologies of the EVs might not always be primary, that is, inherent to the individual or gestated in early childhood. When external circumstances prevent the person from his deep calling, that is, to follow their north, the chi keeps compressed within and often manifests itself in the form of a frustration that at the same time may also resonate on daimai acupoints. In fact, many patients' deep and unexpressed anger bitterness or resentment can be resolved by needling points on this meridian. At a higher level, Daimai enables the internalization of the order of the world. If this is not the case, the subject will lack the necessary inner moral guidance to hold back and may behave in a dishonest way. Therefore, such 
type of behavior should lead us to consider a daimai resonance. The situation of daimai around the waist is another element that, counterintuitively, contributes to the individual's verticalization. We can imagine daimai as if it were that stick that holds a plant, embracing, in addition to the main channels, also renmai and dumai with chongmai in the center, as if binding the stuff of wheat, giving them directionality. In this way, it helps these meridians to straighten men, and this is why I say that it contributes to verticalization. And I mention this because in people who are curved or excessively stiff, we can also think of daimai, both as a trunk meridian as well as a transmitter of the cosmos, daimai is also a creative power between the anterior and posterior heaven. In practice, this means considering it for pathologies affecting conception, lactation or reproduction. Because its points are related to Shao Yang, it should be considered in all processes where the difficulty lies in setting in motion. This kind of belt that daimai draws around the organism is not a single waist. We should think of it as multiple circles surrounding the whole body, limbs, joints, etc. Let us remember that daimai crosses with stomach 30. This reinforces its link with joint stiffness or polyarticular pathologies especially when they are dominated by difficulty in starting up or getting going. Therefore, feeling stiff in the morning may not only imply a stagnation of Chiang Mai, but maybe of Tai Mai as well. The deep influence on the whole organism that Tai Mai exerts, from the periphery to the center, can also be seen in the body structure. Just like Western medicine, Chinese medicine also speaks of man. There's no difference. Horizontally, Dai Mai is the meridian that metamerically organizes the whole body. What is a metamera? It is all the body tissue innervated by a nerve root, which starts in the spinal cord and follows a pathway that is very visible in the ribs. Thus, the intercostal nerves innervate different segments of the trunk. This is quite visible in Herbestoster. Such a skin lesion shows the path of the nerve affected by the virus. So the whole organism is innervated and thus stimulated along these transverse lines that resonate on daimai, the extraordinary vessel that methamerically organizes the body. From Chinese medicine's perspective, acupoints belonging to different meridians, but located in the same methameric level, have common elements, which implies analogous functions. So, were you searching for a point to treat a certain disorder, you may also consider the level. For instance, in the clinical case of Dumai, in which I commented that Dumai 12 was in the lung, metal, methamere, this made me consider the confluence of the two resonances, Dumai and the Benshin Po related to metal sphere. So, points from different meridians but located in that precise methamere shade this metal connotation. In the same way, in the different segments where the back shoe points, those acting on each of the Thang Fu, are located, the points of other meridians located at the same methameric level share aspects of the resonance. I'll take now the opportunity to comment on an aspect which, in my opinion, has led to a serious confusion. It affects the back two points, which supposedly are located on the horizontal, below the spine, of each of the vertebrae. 
Probably because we are Westerners, we think that it is geometric horizontal, as if the body were cut in slices. When we are told that a point is on the horizontal of the waist, we should bear in mind that each person's waist has its own pattern, which is sinusoidal, which in women is better appreciated, from number two following the narrow part of the waist up to the navel. The same applies to the back shoe points. Because of the ribs inclination, which indicate the metameric slope, when we look for a back shoe point on the geometric horizontal, we may find ourselves with the contradiction of looking for an acupoint, point, which name is shue, that means hollow, on a rib. So I find it impossible to find a hollow just on a bone. In fact, for many years I couldn't find the supposed actions of this point working. And now I'm certain that this is because, at the time, I didn't localize them where they really are. So, to locate both the back shoe points, as well as those affecting the respect thanks benchen, which is at twice the distance from the midline, we must follow the methameric lines, which slope more and more as we descend the dorsal vertebra. But in fact, this also depends on the person's trunk structure, its amplitude and distribution. Following this line, we do find the back shoe point with its action as well as the one affecting the benchen. All the joints of the body are like belts, small belts that the chi must pass through. These small belts are related to dai mai. This explains why, among the clinical indications attributed to it, we find that it can treat all joints, all joint disorders, morning stiffness, etc. In other words, daimai is not limited to the waist. It is a large belt that spirally embraces the whole body, head, limbs, joints. Seeing it in this way, like a Taoist image, allows us to understand its overall function much better. Conversely, as the inner Chong Mai Yin expands man's potency outwards, shaping their structure, the outer Dai Mai Meridian, which is Yang, exerts its influence from the cosmos inwards. In this way, it propels the movement of all Yin at different levels. Let us give examples. If we attend to a topographical reference, on Dai Mai would resonate the trunk activities because it is yin in relation to the limbs, but also of the abdominal ones because in relation to the thorax it is yin as well. In an analogic way, phenomena of the lower part of the body, which is yin in relation to the upper part, and even alteration of the points or joints which are deep yin in relation to the surface can also resonate on this transversal extraordinary vessel. Moreover, since matter is yin in relation to qi, any alterations in the transits of any kind of matters, such as blood, its stagnation generating hemorrhoids or varicose veins, or stools leading either to constipation or diarrhea, as well as pathologies affecting any liquid, for example vaginal or seminal fluid, can be a consequence of the alteration of Tai Mai. Seen in this way, even a difficult delivery, which is in fact a material transit, can therefore be eventually treated by using points of this extraordinary vessel. Finally, the action of Daimai encompasses the poles of the body, allowing the changes between the upper and the lower to take place in a flexible, fluid and harmonious way. Where this is not the case, various symptoms may appear, which have a, as a common cause an imbalance between the upper and the lower zones. For instance, it can cause a deficiency of qi in the lower part of the body, manifested, for example, in weakness or rheumatisms of the legs, but also in the form of a qi blockage in the center, 
lumbalgia, coxalgia, or abdominal distension, as well as signs of fullness or agitation of qi in the upper part, insomnia, headache, or red eyes. And all this obeys the essential function of Daimai, to internalize the order of the cosmos, which is ultimately the one that dictates how the qi should be balanced and distributed. We felt it was important to explain and clarify both this basic idea, as well as others that have been introduced in this video, because otherwise many clinical actions attributable to this meridian were not clearly explained. And as a result, this theory video has turned out to be much longer than the others, in which we had basically limited ourselves to the psychological aspects. Anyway, we hope that you have been able to enjoy it as well.